Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of Tables, Others and Chairs. Uh, today's guest, an international guest, uh, a 16 year old vet, like a fine wine, he gets better with age, Sugar Dunkerton. How's it going, man? Oh, look at you. you that, that, makes me, that makes me feel so good. Like You, you got me sounding like a vintage over here. It's very <laughs> nice. It's very nice. How's it going? Um, cool, man. Like uh, I just got back from uh, Great Yarmouth uh, yesterday for DOA Wrestling. Uh, Russell, very, very talented Charles Crowley. Uh, people should probably be paying more attention to him. Like he's a little bit more seasoning, and I think he's going to be taking some things over in a little while. But uh, today, title wrestling, very awesome women's matinee show just a moment ago. And then uh, today, we're having the mystery show. Nobody knows what all the matches are. I don't even know who my opponent is yet. So we're going to have ourselves a good time. Uh, obviously, no stranger to these shows. You're over quite regularly. Uh, how are you enjoying things in the UK? Like, it's it's definitely been a discovery period. Like, um, over the past... I've done, in, cumulative, I've done cumulatively almost two years between all my tours. Um, this is the fifth tour that I'm on for right now. And this date, this date is September the 29th. So, um, I leave here on December the 9th. So, um, I feel like this fifth tour, it's a lot of... Uh, so why are we here when it's all said and done? Before it's like, could I get here? And can I last here? And can I do here? And can I get to some of these places? And I've kind of surprised myself in some of the stuff that I've been able to accomplish. But it's one of those things now where, um, you know, why? Like, why are we here now? So a lot of it is trying to cement, does this become a more of a permanent thing? Or like, um, do I need to shorten my trips or... It's, it's a lot of trying to, to figure out the why of what's going to keep me going um, here as much as I enjoy it and I love it. Um, I know definitely there's been a ton of drama and change and just uncertainty about what's going on over here. But, um, you know, I'm right along with it. You know, I could have chose to stay home after hearing a lot of the stuff that was going on. But it's like, no, I want to be in the thick of it. I want to see what's happening. So, yeah, the big thing is the why. So... When you first came over here, mm -hmm. your like main base was up north. Yes, uh, Preston. Places like PCW, mm -hmm. uh, branching out to other places like Tidal and Hope. Uh, what's your actual like view of the British wrestling scene when you first came over? What was like the main differences between the scene over here and the scene in the US? I want to say the two different things are pride and um, you no, know, I, I can say it as one thing. It's it's pride, the wrestlers and the fans. Um, we've seen American fans try to do the football chants and, you know, they try to copycat a lot of the stuff that the international fans do. And like a lot of the times we get a sprinkling of that during WrestleMania season in America, because a lot of people come from all over the world. So they sprinkle in like the, the seven nation army style football chants and, you know, the songs, are, Oh, I want to know all that stuff like that, which I love. And you can tell when it's predominantly an international crowd because they're actually on beat and rhythm. <laughs> American crowds don't do so well with that, I've noticed. But, um, you know, there's melody to it and there's just a certain energy to it. And, um, you know, people just let the show be the show. They came to get entertained. They paid good money for it. And why not? I paid good money. I want to be entertained. I want to enjoy this. Um, I'm not trying to be the show. I'm letting you be the show. I'm going to be a part of it, but I'll let you be the show. And then from the workers, there's such a pride aspect because if you paid attention to the history of Brit wrestling, um, a lot of it, you know, there was a very, very hard time where there were a lot of guys that just didn't make it or you'd be lucky if a uh, UK talent would get signed every two or three years or such and such. Like for a while, it was like Paul Burchill, Wade Barrett. That's what y'all had, you know, and then before that it was British Bulldog. You know, and everything was on their, sh it's like everything was on their shoulders. And now y'all have got so much more choice and guys that are getting out there and making waves, you know, uh, a whole brand dedicated to it with NXT and everything to that effect. So there's such pride in what y'all do over here. And um, I've always admired the style. I've always dug it. I feel like there's been a lot of copycatting. So why not go to the source? And I feel like uh, I was missing something. So I needed to try something different. And I came here, and I'm glad I did. And obviously, I kept coming back. Where would you say, like, um, your popularity with the British fans began? Would you say it was, like, PCW, Tidal, kind of a mixture of the both? It, I, I'd have to give credit to both because 
I did title before I did PCW. At the time, PCW was the biggest thing that I would have done because they had the big uh, tournament that they had. Like, they had the tag team tournament and the singles tournament. And um, Road to Glory. Yes. That's what they called it. So, um, title would have been the start of it because that's when the whole Sugar Sugar thing started popping off. And, like, I felt honored that, you know, they thought as much to kind of give me my own song. You know, I was like, okay, I thought they only do this for, like... You know, at the time, Enzo and all that other shit like that. So it was like, I can't cuss, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would have been <laughs> so mortified. But, like, um, nah, like that really hit me, and I meant it when um, they said it that night. And then it followed to PCW where, you know, it was to the point where the match can't even start for the first three or four minutes because they just won't stop. And I thought it was, I thought it was great. And it, it, it was really a point of acceptance where I knew – it was like, hey, I can do this. I can really do this. Like, I, I came over here just to see, but I feel it now. Like, I can do this. Like, we have a connection, and we can make that happen. And um, I've been blessed to keep making stuff happen ever since, yeah. Obviously, it helps that the fact that uh, the UK is obviously a very small country in comparison Word to the United States. Yeah. And uh, uh, you probably see a lot of the same fans in, in all the various places over the UK. Sure. A bit up north or down south. New ones, but then you also got traveling ones. I always get a laugh when people talk about traveling here in the UK because, you know, like I'm used to, I've done stuff where I've done 12 hours one way to a booking and then, you know, you figure it out. And then they're like, oh man, we got to do a four hour journey. This is going to be, this is going to be crazy. And I'm like, right. If I knew how to drive, I'd probably be doing some like, well, I know how to drive. I just don't know how to drive these roads. <laughs> um, I'd probably be trying to be everywhere at once. Like, I tr I'd try to make a crack at Legero's schedule, as crazy as that would probably be. Like, I don't know how the man did it. He's a madman. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like me next week. I'm uh, at Riptide for the weekend, and uh, I'm dreading that really long four-hour journey. Uh, <laughs> right. As far as going. No. And plus, uh, like, my heart's broken. I can't do... Uh, I, I got Riptide on the docket. It's just not right away. God, their shows are always so much fun. It's like the great atmosphere, like for the fans and for the workers. Like I, I love me some Riptide. Like good, you you made a good choice. Speaking of Riptide, uh, that's one place that you've uh, managed to make inroads in. Uh, notably, your debut at the Riptide Rumble. You've appeared at a few other shows. Uh, how are you enjoying your time down at Riptide? Riptide is. <laughs> It's his own universe. Like it makes sense that they're all the way down south, like in their own little pocket, because it's like uh, they, they just do their own thing, man. It's crazy, and like there's a lot of companies that keep talking about counterculture, this and all this other stuff, like counterculture, this uh, inclusivity, all this other stuff. They talk about it, but Riptide, I always got that feeling from the jump. It was just like we could talk about making this for everybody, or we could just do it, and they do it like every time out, like. Um, Anything is possible. I feel like, you know, it doesn't matter female, guy, uh, gay, straight, what have you. Like, swan. swan yeah, like <laughs> swan. Species, uh, interstellar, time travel, time warp. It doesn't matter. Like, anything is truly possible at Riptide. And how could you not want to be a part of it when you see it from the way that it's filmed to the matches they present? It's truly something special. And I've had a chance to... Uh, really vibe with like the creative team and all the other stuff the only thing that that kills me is just we we don't do more you know what i'm saying like we do enough but we don't do more and i'm trying to work out doing as much as i can with them as possible yeah another place that you've uh, found yourself in recently uh, you made some appearances for rev pro yes uh, and progress uh, yeah. most notably a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. their big alexandra palace show uh, what was that like appearing at that show? Rev Pro, I think I want to say was second tour when we got around to it and everything like that. I think that was more of a time when they were kind of testing having characters because they had Colt come through. They had the anti-fun police for a little bit. I think now because of their New Japan partnership, you kind of see it reflecting in the style of guys that they booked where they got a little bit more serious in terms of that. It's like, you know, Tyson kick pass, baby. Uh, which ain't a problem. Everybody's got to have their own identifier when it's all said and done. Um, if Red Pro, if the door opens to be able to slide back through there, I absolutely love it. I know I'd have to adapt the style, but to me, I feel like a lot of people, um, I guess the best way to put it is a lot of people assume I'm one thing, but I feel like if you look at my catalog, I can do 
a lot. Like I can brawl. Um, I'm very big on the world of sport, technical style, all sorts of stuff. It's just a matter of just putting me in the situation. So um, if that were to come around, especially with stuff going on where like, you know, recently they've acquired Southside and all the stuff that's going on, I'd be totally open to it. As for progress, to me, um, and I unabashedly have no qualms about saying it, that's the crown jewel. Like, if you're doing British indie wrestling, to me, that's the pinnacle. That's where you want to be. You want to at least have your one opportunity or get seen there. I'm, I'm not saying you got to have a run, but you at least want to say, I did progress. And um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to say one, two, three... Yeah, three times. So, like, I'm fortunate. One time is a Russian, but we won't get into all that. <laughs> but, um, like, it was this impossible dream that I didn't think I'd be able to do, and I, I did it. And I'm happy for that, and I'm proud of that. Hopefully, I'll be able to do more of that because uh, progress is one of those well-respected ones where you work there, everybody pays attention to it. And you need that in this business right now. Uh, you mentioned before about uh, the RevPro style, the link with a... Uh... New Japan Pro Wrestling. Does it annoy you um, slightly being pigeonholed as just a comedy wrestler? Um, on a personal level, no. But on a possibilities level, yes. Because it's like, I think of me, I'm a possibilities guy. I think of the possibilities all the time. I think of a lot of people can't fathom or put together like, oh, there's no way this could ever happen or this could ever happen. As long as there's time and there's breath, there's always a possibility for something. It's just a matter of are people willing to put the chemicals together in their head to go ahead and come to the conclusion that, hey, this would fucking pop off. And my thing about it is it's like you could say I'm just a comedy guy. If all you ever give me is comedy to do, sure, that's all I'll ever be. But for those who are daring enough to test my dramatic quality, to test my serious quality, to test my ability to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, punch for punch, blow for blow, I think it changes things considerably. And it's one of those cases where I'm, I'm almost saddened because I think of what I'd be able to offer people if they gave me the opportunity to but you choose to just only do this. It's like going to a restaurant and all you've ever, you're going to a five-star restaurant and all you order is the chicken nuggets off the menu. And it's like, damn it, it's a five-star restaurant, so I know those chicken nuggets are gonna be banging, but like, look at this, 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 they can serve you, and you're just completely missing out on all of that. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. I don't get paid to book. I don't get paid to promote. Like, um, I, go, I go looking and hustling and jacking for bookings, I don't have a family name or somebody that vouches for me or I'm not in any kind of cliques or whatever it is that make it easier for me to get bookings and I don't mind saying that. I, I go, I, I work for every booking that I got and literally every match, every moment, every possibility is the difference between me getting closer to bettering my way of life because this is all I do as a job. I have other things but this is my main source. Or, you know, possibly having to admit that I failed at jumping out on the deep end. But I feel like there's more of an opportunity for me to be able to sustain something that I love. And I feel like people love me doing if you open up more to the just, I make people laugh. Um, you wrestled in Evolve, Dragon Gate USA, <laughs> AIW, uh, you beat Chris Hero in SSW. You've uh, gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nick Gage in Beyond. Uh, Jonathan Gresham in IWC. Yeah. Uh, you've had a, a death match with DJ Hyde in CZW. Uh, you wrestled on Impact Explosion. Um, you've you've beat Doug Williams in PCW. I mean, that's like a pretty varied career. That's not just comedy stuff. Sure. Well, um, people see what they want to see. So like, Shikara is the best and the worst thing sometimes that's happened in my career because I still got people that talk about, oh man, the Space Jam spot and I saw all this stuff and everything like that. But that was one of those cases where the glimpses of me being ultra serious were kind of like, you had to look for them. And for those who discovered them, they really liked them. I got to wrestle uh, Brody Lee, who's now known as Luke Harper there. And I had a singles match with him. And it's one of my favorite matches that I've ever had at that time because I was just excited at the prospect that I don't have to go into a match and make people laugh. I, like they'll get to see a side of me and I think a lot of people were surprised about what they got and yes you go through that list of things 
some of those matches I'm more proud of than others. Like, like when I wrestled Gresham at the time, that really made me have to realize that I wasn't where I needed to be. I needed the match to know, hey, you need to get your shit together. And I'm happy for that, and I hope one day I get a, another shot at that. But sometimes you need matches to know where you stand. So when you have the Doug Williams matches, you can stand for yourself and you make it all happen. You know, I've wrestled Cedric Alexander. Um, I've had another death match and beyond with Matt Tremont. A lot of people don't, a lot, like, a lot of people still don't talk about it. There's, people see what they want to see. And it's one of those cases where um, I, I guess, not trying to be that guy, but if they don't gif it or they don't circulate the video or somebody doesn't decide like, hey, watch this, that has like the circulation like that, people will never know. So it really makes you think about like, man, I'm out here giving these bumps, I'm doing these miles, stuff like that. Is this the one that they're going to see? I, I God, I hope it's the one that they see. And then you, get, you worry about the night that you have an off night, that's the one everybody sees. So then it's like, are you going to go anywhere? Are you not going to go anywhere? I ask these questions to myself all the time. And um, <laughs> it, it's, it's like that whole Pagliacci thing that they talk about where it's like, who makes the great Pagliacci laugh? You know, and it's like, some days are better than others, that's all. But I'm not going to stop trying. So, yeah. The same weekend that um, you beat Doug Williams at PCW, mm -hmm. uh, you had a PCW title match uh, against Lionheart. Oh, Adrian. What was that like being in the ring with uh, the great late Lionheart? We had it in the center of uh, Preston City Square. So literally, like, the, the government building was right behind us. And uh, when I got to come out, I was literally, like, on top of the government building, like, like way up. And they were singing Sugar Sugar from way down low. And they just kept going. And, like, it was literally like a party in the middle of the streets. And there he was. And, like, God, he was such a pro. Like, uh... Anybody he was in the ring with, he made better. He went to bat for me to get me a spot at ICW, among other people, but he definitely made sure that he went to do that. And um, I just remember going out nights with him, and it's like, you know, it's like a celebrity would show up. He goes to the club. Anybody that he's there and who he's with gets in because he's got it like that. Everybody loves Adrian. But he was good with people. He looked out for people. He got the best out of people. And um, total no ego when we went into that. It's like, you know, we talked about what we're going to do, and, He's constantly giving, like, hey, get this in, get that in, get this in, because he wanted people to really believe, like, that night was going to be the night that it happened. And um, it confirmed everything that I knew about him is just how awesome of a human being he is. And it's like, uh, damn, that's a shame that he's not here. And um, that hurt. And it, it's, it hurts the community because it's so few and far between that we have guys like that. So... We want to hold on to them as long as we possibly can, and we think those are the guys that are always going to be there to hold us up. And um, apparently he really needed somebody to hold him up, and we just we will never know what that is now. But um, Sorry, man. No, it's okay. Like, I, I've, I've, I've had my feelings about it. It's just uh, he's definitely going to be missed, and I, I hope he, he, didn't, he didn't leave thinking that he didn't impact so 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 many even people he wasn't expecting to so yeah i love you guy yeah as i said in the intro you're a 16 year veteran growing up as a kid as you got into professional wrestling who were the guys that you looked up to the most it was always the colorful guys like granted i had love for the main event dudes and everything but the trend was always colorful guys and they weren't necessarily main event guys it was like guys that I could just get into, like I enjoyed, like Coco Beware was like a huge, huge favorite of mine. Um, you know, Junkyard Dog, because I know that was mom's favorite and everything like that, but he just had so much personality, so much gusto. Um, main event guy, but still sticking with the pattern, Macho Man Randy Savage, he was that dude, he got down. Um, of course, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Um, and I was always a big fan of like the oddball characters. Like I liked Owen Hart as Blue Blazer. Yes. I thought that was awesome. Like, like he was doing stuff nobody was doing in the ring, but plus, how could you how could you deny that character? Like the character was so awesome. And then as I grew up, like the quirkiness just kept going. Like I, I was big into the characters. Like I like Godfather, I like Norman Smiley, I like Crash Holly. Like um just cats like that where it was like they were fun to watch, but they were fun to watch. Like literally anything you put them in, they was just you were just gonna enjoy it, you know? Um currently like a big one I like is Elias. 
he doesn't even have to really do. He's gone whole stretches without wrestling, but it's just anything he does, it's a guarantee. It's going to be entertaining, man. It's good stuff. Uh, while you're over here, um, you've linked up with David Starr. Yes. And he's a uh, We The Independent That is correct. Uh, how did you first get involved with that, and what is the ultimate aim? I remember he told me about it, and it's just, um, let's just get it out the way. Like, uh, David Starr polarizes people. Pisses people off. Like, like either you really, really like him or you really, really don't. And he draws a lot of politician um, illusions. But at the same time, it's like, I get it. You know, you like in politics, you never hear somebody just talking about, oh, he's OK. Like, no, it's either I love this guy and I'm going to go to the ends of the earth for him. Or it's like, I can't stand this guy. I hope bad things happen to him. You know, it's, it's like that. Um, he's very adamant and in your face about things that he talks about and what he says. But damn it, if you can't get with it, because at least he's a guy that believes in something, you know? And um, one of his biggest things is you look at the way the wrestling business is and you got guys that give their knees, give their backs, give their necks. And you're looking at corporations who make a ton of money, even on just an independent level. I wish indies would break their bank books open one time publicly just so people could see what management is making, the promotion is making, how much they're bringing in, what the workers are getting paid, what the, the production are getting paid, all this other stuff like that. Because there's a ton of situations where people really don't have to be nickel and diamond people over 20 quid. Or like, um, I need you to work for exposure. And some of the biggest companies you'd be surprised make a ton of money and none of it passes down to the guys that are like putting it down and trying to break their necks to try to get to that next step for them. And it's, it's shameful and it's sad and Star wants to do something about it. So his big thing with We The Independent is he's trying to shine a light on independent artists, trying to make things that are happening. Like he wants it eventually to be bigger than just wrestling and other artists as well. But um, I didn't like, I'm ashamed to say it, but I didn't have insurance for a little while taking regular bookings and now I have it because you know he sat down, he had the meetings, he went to Equity UK. He, got something done it's the first real union for wrestlers like if something were to happen to me here or back in the states um i'm now covered where i can still get a percentage of what i would make in my bookings it, at least for a little while which is more than what i would have ever gotten in the first place um he's trying to at least change things and i know some people are scared of that and they don't want to hear that and they think it's like Oh, well, it's contract versus independent. It's not contract versus independent. It's you getting what you're supposed to get, what you're worth. There's a lot of guys that are making good money on contracts, but they're still paying for their own health insurance. And there's no 401k. There's no benefits. There's no retirement. And there's plenty of companies. Like, I don't have to name the companies. You can put two and two together. But there's plenty of companies. Like, best example that I heard, the NFL makes big money. They make big money than wrestling companies will ever do. Right. The NFL found that like 25 to 30 percent of his expenditure was payroll on the people. You know what I'm saying? On their people. And you see the big money that these guys are getting. They're 100 million, 200 million contracts, all this stuff like that. In professional wrestling, one of the biggest companies and you can probably do whatever parallel you need. I don't have to do that. But the biggest company in the world, their payroll is about 10 to 12 percent. Payroll for anybody that's classified as independent contractor because you know they have people that do get 401k benefits, all that other stuff, but they're considered company. Look, you do the research and look at how much profit they pulled the last few years and how much profit they stand to pull and where their stock is at and all that other stuff like that. And you mean to tell me they couldn't afford to lose a little bit more money so that some of these guys could get packages and all that other stuff like that what have you but that's a whole nother conversation the point is we can't get to that conversation without these conversations that we're having now it's something small but i feel like it'll turn into something bigger and if i have to think about what my legacy will be and what i wanted to be a part of i want to be on the right side of history so that's why i support we the independent i want to end things with a, a little word association game Please. I'm going to throw some names at you and you should say the first things that come into your head about Got it. it. David Starr. Controversial, polarizing, 
uh, mad genius, hell of a professional wrestler. Jack Sexsmith. Genuine, um, daring, absolutely important and necessary to what Brit Rest was at the time to move inclusivity forward. Gene Money. Hilarious. Um, off the wall. Um, I think the term you use is grafter. Um, I love to see when a hustler makes it. And he put in all the work to absolutely make it. And he deserves it. Will, absolutely deserves it. Will Cruz. Big boy. Uh, like, I can see a bright future for him. He's just got to stay the course, that's all. Joe Nelson. The future leader of uh, Brit Wrestling. Um, Grizzled Young, the real Grizzled Young vet, as I like to call it. Like, he's the youngest, grownest dude I've ever seen in life. And it's like the way he carries himself to how he talks, to how he lays his stuff out. I, I, I'm not playing with you. Like, in two to three years, that is the leader of Brit Wrestling. He's deciding whether you stay or whether you go. Chris Brooks. Influential. Um, yes, it is a cult. A lot of like people, people will understand that. Uh, but definitely influ influential. He's another mad genius in his own way and super creative. Um, DIY is definitely the thing that you would want to put with him and whatnot. Um, Britt Wrestling definitely would lose a lot of its spark and its edge if he didn't exist. So, yeah. Matthew Brooks. Hell of a talent. Don't know why he picked professional wrestling. As, as, as good as he looks, as well as he can sing, as chiseled as he is, God, he could have did anything else. So you know he's got to love it. Um, future star. I can see him with a contract easy in another, like anywhere from a year to three years from now. Like Arrow. Hardest working man that British wrestling has ever known. Um, like, you, you, you couldn't have, had, like he was a linchpin. You couldn't have had it without him. So yeah. Martina the Session Moth. Oh, <laughs> um, my! Um, I always joke my future ex-wife. Um, she's the best bad decision that you'll ever see on a show, and it's like she's so genuine. Like, and the other thing is, um, she's a she's a real queen. Like, uh, she she puts the work in. She busted her ass. She's giving you 100% of her every time she's getting ready to do it. And, like, the sky's the limit for her as long as uh, John Cena doesn't want to marry her. Because then she's going to become the happiest housewife in the world. Good. Uh, one of your arch nemesis in Brit Rest, Los Federalos Santos Jr. The, 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 the King Hoss of Hosses. Um, beloved for a reason. Um, absolute just stud of a guy like he's great like I think the world of him and um there's a reason he's been as successful as he is like you even with a mask on you can't just hide how infectious he is great dude PCW um I feel like where I really knew that Burt Rest was for me um a lot of history um hell uh we gotta call it one of my homes yeah. Title. Home. Um, the best live experience that you'll ever have in professional wrestling. Progress. The pinnacle. Uh, the summit. The goal. Um, still chasing. If you're going to do it somewhere, it needs to be there. Last one. Sugar Dungerton. Still looking. Still searching, having a hell of a time doing it. Final question. Where do you see yourself in a year's time? Hopefully not in the same place. That's just the truth. Sugar, thank you very much for your time, man. Yes, sir.